Hi there, this is the third of three videos looking at using linear equations affecting both demand and supply in the market. In our first video we looked at linear demand equations, in the second we looked at linear supply and in this third video bringing it together we're going to think about market equilibrium. So consider the market for shoes, take any kind of market really and we can write down two linear demand and supply functions. If you followed my previous two videos, this hopefully should be fairly familiar to you. So let the quantity demanded, QD, be 82 minus 4P, and let the quantity supplied from shoe producers be minus 30 plus 3P. So you have two, uh, two equations, demand and supply, and of course equilibrium in a market is defined as a state of balance, where the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied are equal in the market. So we just have to put the two equal to each other, let uh, QD equal QS. Uh, so therefore, 82 minus 4P equals minus 30 plus 3P. Of course, we're looking here for the equilibrium price, we're looking for the, the, the price format. So rearranging, take over the 4, 7P equals 112. Therefore, the equilibrium price in the market will be £16 at that price, £16. Cheaper a pair of shoes, quantity demanded and quantity supplied will be the same at 112. Let's think about what happens in the market if there's an increase in market demand. You can, maybe before we look at the equations, maybe you can visualise the effect of an outward shift in the demand curve for a product and the impact you'd expect to see both on the quantity and also on the market price. So here's our two equations again, QD1 and QS1. Uh, reflecting the linear demand and supply functions, equivalent price £16 as we had in the previous slide. Now let's consider an increase in the market demand for shoes and now we write QD2 equals 103 minus 4P. So effectively we've increased the, the level of demand at each price level. Perhaps there's been an increase in the price of, uh, increase in the real income of consumers. We're going to assume there's no change in the conditions of supply. So we're keeping our supply function exactly the same as we had before. QS1 equals minus 30 plus 3P. Well, of course, we're looking for equilibrium. So we put the two equations together. 103 minus 4 times the price equals minus 30 plus 3 times the price. So rearranging 7 times the price, or well, 7P equals 133. And therefore the new equivalent price goes up to £19. Now can you visualise that? An outward shift of demand causes a movement up the supply curve to a higher equilibrium price and of course a new quantity. At this price both demand and supply equal 27. So what we've shown here using equations is that increased market demand has caused an, an increase in the price and an expansion of quantity supplied. Let's think about an increase in market supply, an outward shift of market supply. So I'm going to go back to all the old equations. Okay, the equivalent price is 20 in this case, in this situation. So QD1 equals 120 minus 5P. QS1 equals minus 60 plus 4P. Put the two together to find an equilibrium. We find that price equals 20. Now, halfway down the slide here, there's been an increase in market supply. So can you visualize that? That's an outward shift of the market supply curve. Think about what that does to the price and the quantity. Now, the new supply function is minus 24 plus 4p. In other words, it only takes six pounds price for supply to be positive, whereas before it's 15. So now we've kept the demand the same. Demand is 120 minus 5p. We now have a new supply function. So at, equilib at equilibrium, where supply equals demand, 120 minus 5p equals minus 24 plus 4p. Rearranging, we find that 9p equals 144. Therefore, the equilibrium price is 16. So at the new price, the quantity demanded is expanded and uh, clearly the price has gone down as a result of an outward shift of market supply. This is exactly what we'd expect to see in a market. So market equilibrium using linear equations. 